Good luck for your podcast. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> like, like, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Hi, friends. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Amanda and this is Ace Creates and I'm here with another podcast episode. A lot sooner than I thought I would have a podcast episode, but I've done quite a bit of work uh, recently, so I thought I'd catch you up on where I'm at on all my projects and uh, go from there. So let's get into the video. First thing that I have to show you is my Muna Cardi by Tony Lipsy and I am using, um, don't mind the mess of yarn, I am using Baliora Fibers, um, Fingles Cave, They're her Tweed DK, it's a very kind of washed out black uh, with tweed. And uh, I believe on the last podcast episode, I had finished the body part. Um, so the front two panels and the back panels. And that looked like this. And I needed to start working on the sleeves. Um, and so my goal was to work and complete one sleeve, which I did. And so this is the first sleeve. It's the same pattern. It's this honeycomb pattern and then Tunisian stitch, um, increasing throughout on regular intervals. And um, I, I am close to running out of yarn. I will have enough to do the arm, the other arm, because this took up one skein of yarn. So this whole thing is one skein of yarn and I only have one more full skein and then I have a partial skein to do the pocket. So I might have to do, I might have to forgo pockets or I'll kind of cross that bridge when I get to it. But um, yeah, I, I might have to cut out the pockets. We'll just see. Um, I did start casting on um, at stitch night as I rip out things. Um, my second arm. Um, and so I just have a couple more rows of the honeycomb pattern and then I'll just do the simple stitch. So my goal this week is to get this other arm done. Um, and I'm maybe my stretch goal would be to seam it all together, but I have to block these pieces and I know that they're going to take a while to dry. So actually my stretch goal probably is going to be just to block the individual pieces because I have to individually block them before I um, seam them up. And so I'm probably gonna do that as my stretch goal is to finish the arm, the second arm, and then block my work um, so that way I can kind of start seaming this and putting it together because my bigger goal is to have this done by the end of February. I want this cardigan done and off of my needles or my hook and um, so that I can cast on another project because I'm really starting to get like cast on itis and I really want to start and cast on a project but I really feel like I need to finish a project before I cast on another one because I have four active whips right now and um, I would like to move something into the FO. So um, this will get done by the end of February. I'm not sure uh, when my next podcast will be, but uh, I will definitely give you updates of where I'm at in the next podcast. And you can always, I'm always posting on shorts and reels. Um, I'm Ace Creates on Instagram and I post a lot of shorts on my channel here. So there's usually like mini updates on my socials. So that is the Municardi from TL Yarn Crafts with a goal of completing the second sleeve and a stretch goal of blocking everything so that I can start seaming this project together. It's getting too big, like this bag, I got it at a um, Our Maker Life and um, 
it's getting too big for this. Like, it's almost getting, it's, this is like a good sweater bag. So that's my first project. My second project here is the Fairbank shawl, again by Tony Lipsy. This is like a, a little Tony Lipsy fan account. <laughs> You've, uh, if you're new here, I really love her crochet work and she, um, her Tunisian crochet work. And so um, I like a lot of her patterns. Um, they're really easy to read. She's got a lot of great tutorials. And so it's just, it's super easy. So this is my Fairbanks shawl. And it's getting huge. Um, I am using the Sorella yarn, Tony Lipsy yarn, <laughs> um, a collaboration yarn, and I'm using the 15 minis along with Surf City, which is a coordinating like variegated skein. Um, it's like this really creamy oatmeal with all the speckles of all the colors. And so my goal is to use all 15 skeins. Um, I've kind of modified the pattern quite a bit. Um, I increased the amount of rows that the contrasting color, that oatmeal skein of Surf City is. I've increased that uh, the, so that I could use both skeins of Surf City. And then I've also done this spike stitch that's supposed to appear later on in the pattern, but I chose to do it um, in the first row of the minis um, in each mini so I do a spike stitch every I don't know I, it just depends um but 10-15 rows or so and I'm getting towards the end as you can see my colors are getting shorter and shorter not as harder even to tell but they're not as deep anymore you know or as many rows so we're getting towards the end. I actually have, let's see, one, two, three. Let's see. And I've been just, I wanted, I want to get this done because if I just let this sit because it's not a passion project or a priority right now, it will sit. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to take like bite-sized chunks from it so that way, um, I can get it done. So it looks like I have four colors left of the minis and I'm um, this is probably 50 or 60 grams of the contrasting color. So I'm a little worried that I'm actually gonna run out of this before this um, but I also did this on purpose so that way um some of these more this is pink but um they're a little bit more neutral like they can either be the last colors or if all else fails like I'm okay with um not using all 15 I, it'd be great if I used all 15 if not it's not the end of the world I'll just add it to like my little mini skein pile um and so my goal each week is to do a row of contrasting and a row of mini. And then um, the last few weeks, I think I've gotten actually maybe sometimes two colors or two contrasting in. So my goal um, by the time we check in next is to have at least this done um, and maybe a stretch of, because I'm on a contrasting row. So one of this, one of this, and then maybe another contrasting. And if I get lucky, another color, but I'm just trying to break it down. And at this rate, it'll take me another two or three weeks, two, three or four weeks actually, technically. But I kind of like, I would really like to get this done by the end of February too. So that way I have two finished objects by the end of February. So I might prioritize finishing this over some of my other projects besides the Municardi. So that way I can get them in and considered cast off and done and blocked. And so 
this is the Fairbank shawl and it's going to be really beautiful and cozy and like huge and I love that it's going to be huge like because like it just looks so regal like oh like I'm just going to wear it like this like I just I love this about it like I just I love the oversized nature of this and it's going to even grow even bigger because I have more to go but also because it's going to block so it's gonna just be a wonderful kind of almost statement pieces. And this is why I love cowls and shawls and everything because it dresses up a t-shirt and jeans so much that like I don't necessarily, that's why I wear a lot of shawls and cowls because you know, I haven't made as many garments yet. And so this will dress up any any anything I'm wearing, so. Excited to get the Fairbanks shawl done and into my wardrobe so that way I can wear it. Oh, I forgot to say. I think since the last time that I checked in with you guys, I was on this pink row. And so I was able to get four rows done or four colors, two contrasting and two main colors or minis. And so I made quite a bit of progress since we checked in on this last. So we'll see how far I get. Again, hoping, you know, a mini and a contrasting. And we'll maybe push to get that done this week or next, like in the next two weeks so that we can get it done for February. And we can kind of go into February with like a clean slate of, I mean, I still have other projects, but having two fresh finished objects entering March and only having right now two other main whips can open up either for a new cast on or maybe pulling something out of the graveyard to finish up. So third whip that you guys have seen is the Lento. And although it looks bad. I have a lot to talk about this. And so um, my goal the last time I talked to you guys was to finish the neckline and um, sew it together and then start working on the short rows. And I am there. Um, actually, the short rows were, weren't even part of the goal. It was just to finish the neckline. So I did that. And then I started working on the short rows. And this is the first time I'm doing short rows. And um, I've got to figure out a better way to make sure like my I'm counting or my count is right. And so I might have to like sit down and do write out the count for myself each row. So that way I make sure I have the right number of stitches because I'm afraid that I missed some of the stitches in it because at some point in the pattern, you're supposed to like add a few more stitches in, um, in each row. And so I'm afraid that I miss those. So I think this is going to sound cringy, but I think I might have to tear out and start fresh on the German shirt rows. Um, and I'm okay with that because it's more practice for me. I mean, I definitely don't like purling, but purling is not the end of the world. So um, I'm actually going to a stitch night and I'm tonight to meet two gal pals of mine. I might have, and she, the one gal is a, an amazing knitter. So I might have her help me like tear back and then pick my stitches back up um, and go from there. But it's turning out really well. I'm using the Ruby and Res, <laughs> Ruby and Roses um, Soft Rose, in the colorway mistletoe mixer and then i'm using i think it's the rose cloud but it's the surrey in the same colorway mistletoe mixer and my, the idea is that this becomes like my christmas sweater and it doesn't scream christmas because it really reminded me of christmas lights um it's on this white creamy pinky base um and it's just this beautiful speckled sweater and I I'm excited to wear this like I'm super super excited to wear this so 
I my goal is to do the short rows and start the body by the next time I check in with you guys and so I'm hoping my friend can help me um, tear back um, and then we can start afresh uh, on the German short rows and I got to come up with like that better solution but I'm loving the way this feels and is you know looks worked up um, I did definitely run into some issues with the cast on edge. I did a provisional cast on with crochet. I think I need, like I did it and it was great, but then trying to get those stitches off, like it just was not working for me. Um, I don't know if it got stuck or what, but it was just kind of like a nightmare. So I'm gonna have to learn a different or way to do a provisional cast on whether that's through like uh, barber cord or something like that where the stitches are a lot easier the live stitches are a lot easier to pick up so I can knit them together um you live and learn um honestly I probably would have even been better off just doing my normal knitted cast on and because you're hiding this gets hidden anyways so like comfort wise it probably would have been better and it wouldn't have taken me as long but you live and learn and um, I love how stretchy, oh my gosh, it's super stretchy. So yeah, I'm excited to get this um, on and hopefully by the next time I check in with you guys, I'll have the short rows done and we'll start working on the raglan increases um, for, cause I'll have made it all the way back around and we'll just be kind of working in the round. So that is my goal for the Lento by Jana Hytella. So the next project that I have is, um, and I can show you the colors. I didn't realize I could actually show you the colors for this all along. But um, the project that I'm working on is a test Tunisian crochet for Jen Violet Loops. And I am doing the Sincere Shawl. And I am using Sincere Fiber Company's uh, yarn. Um, they're her 100% uh, Superwash Merino. It's a three pot ply, 438 yarns. And um, I'm using one of a tonal um, in this beautiful, it's not probably gonna show up really well, but it's this beautifully rich, dark, teal, peacocky, blue, um, green. And then this beautiful variegated skein. So I'm using two skeins of the variegated. Um, and it's like these deep blacks and blues. And it's just so beautiful and scrumptious. This yarn is to die for um, in terms of like, how soft it feels and how springy it is. And it's been a real joy to work with. And so I am doing the Sincere Shawl and it's a test and the pattern will be out later this spring. And um, I actually just cast this on a few days ago because it's due at the end of March and I needed to like, get it cast on um, and uh, get moving on it. And so um, I am actually, you can kind of see, but I just did the first kind of set of rows and then I changed colors and did this next set and I'm back and switched colors. And then now I'm, I'm heading back to, um, color A again. And so it's this really, really, I love this pattern so far. Um, it's actually a new stitch to me. I haven't done, uh, this part is made up of the Tunisian ladder stitch and I haven't done anything with the lattice stitch before. So, um, it was looking a little wonky to me because I thought I was doing it wrong, but as it, you, you work it up and work it out, you start to see the stitch definition and the stitch pattern a lot more clearer. 
And so, um, yeah, it's a little baby shawl right now, but it's gonna be this big, gorgeous Tunisian crochet. And what's cool is Jen is doing both a Tunisian crochet version and a regular crochet version. And I believe the regular crochet version is gonna be done out of DK weight yarn, whereas the uh, Tunisian is out of fingering weight. So I'm using, like I said, I'm using three skeins in total, um, one contrasting color, and then, um, and this is the colorway, I think it's, let me just double check. So this colorway is called Winter Night. Um, it's the variegated. And then this one is called Indications. And it's that peacock, teal, dark, dark, teal. I really, I almost want to make a top out of this blue. Um, so I might, I don't know. I don't know if she has more, but I'm, I don't know. Like this, I'm going to see it worked up in full but this blue is really 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 nice but I'm really excited so using those and yeah that's so my next kind of check-in goal uh really is to do the next patch of the the contrasting or the variegated skein so I have to do a bunch of rows of the variegated skein um so that's kind of my next goal for myself for the week um, I'm not sure if, again, I'm going to be checking in with you guys weekly or bi-weekly. So you'll probably see at least two, one, if not two more sections by the time we meet next. Hopefully, if all goes well. And this is the Sincere Shawl. It's a test uh, for Violet Loops, Jen at Violet Loops. And it will come out later this spring. So that is all I have for you today uh, for this podcast episode. Hopefully it was a lot quicker than normal and it was just a big whip update. Uh, lots of whips in progress. I do have a lot of upcoming plans and I'm really excited to see kind of what projects are, are my next cast ons um, and, and looking forward to getting two projects off of my hooks so that I have room kind of in my rotation to add on another project or two. I have a couple tests coming up. The one I'm working on, I have another test uh, for Violet Loops, another one or two maybe. <laughs> I just keep, she has great patterns, so I just keep signing up for tests. Um, and I just submitted one for a worsted weight vest, which um, that'll be interesting because I'm gonna see what I can stash dive here to use and I might even use some acrylic. So we'll see uh, if I get selected for that one, but it looked like a really cute, really cute vest. And so, uh, and it's Tunisian crochet. So, and it looks like knitting and I love it. And that's what I love about Tunisian crochet. So uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching friends. If you really liked this video, I'd appreciate you giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you like content like this. Podcasts, I do vlogs where I'll go to Fiberfest uh, and uh, show you everything that's happening at the Fiberfest. Um, I'm doing some beginning Tunisian crochet content coming soon, so definitely be on the lookout. So if that sounds uh, like your jam, be sure to give it a uh, thumbs and subscribe to my channel. Oh yeah, the object, the finished object of the video. This is my Westmont shawl. This is actually my first ever Tunisian crochet project. And this is the Westmont shawl by Tony Lipsy. And I love it and I've made two of them. So I don't have the other one, that was a gift. But yeah, I love it. So thank you so much for watching friends. I will see you in the next video. Bye now.